us complete our last video on the applications of converging lens. In this video, we are going to learn about magnifying lens. So in the earlier videos, we have understood the working of cameras and projectors. So let us proceed with our understanding of magnifying lens. What is a magnifying lens? We all have seen it in our day-to-day -day lives. A magnifying lens is a converging lens held close to an object as you see here in the picture. So if it is held close to the object, the tiny object which is behind it, it appears magnified. That's the whole purpose of magnifying lens. It magnifies tiny objects. Where is the object placed? The object lens distance is between f and lens. The image is formed on the same side as the object. Mm -hmm. So let us understand it as we move on a whiteboard. The image here is virtual, upright and magnified. We'll understand all these points. Let us move on to a whiteboard. So what are we going to understand? A magnifying lens. Where is the object? Important point to understand between f and the lens. So let us take an object. Let us take an object. Where will you take the object? Between f and the lens that you see here. So let us take an object somewhere in this region. Let me draw an object here quickly. A tiny object maybe because magnifying lens is used to see a tiny object. So I'm taking a tiny object. That's your object. Okay, neater object maybe. Yes. So that's your object. Let's create its image. A ray which passes, one of the construction rays is a ray which passes parallel to the principal axis. A ray which passes parallel moves through the focus on the other side. That's your construction ray number one. Let us put the arrows coming parallel going through the focus. Another construction ray. A ray which passes through the through the center of the lens. Let me make a ray which is moving through the lens. It will pass straight as it is without any bending. So do you see? No bending happening, passing straight through without any bending. Now are these two rays going to intersect anywhere? These two are diverging, right? If these two are diverging, will they ever intersect anywhere? No. So if there is no point of intersection, how do you get the image? For getting an image so far, we have always found the point of intersection, right? Here, not possible to get a point of intersection. So what do we do now? We are going to do some imaginary work. We will be doing some imaginary work. We'll be using dotted lines. So I'll start with solid line, but I later convert it into dotted line. So what are we going to do? We are going to extend these rays behind, behind the lens in the same straight line and the other line would extend something like this all right let me convert these lines as dotted lines because these this is not the actual path taken by the ray of light this is our imaginary work i'm making these lines as dotted lines imaginary work so dotted lines please do remember this is a principle you need to remember all the time all right, so small object, dotted lines, and they have a point of intersection. Let us mark the point of intersection with red color. That's a point of intersection. Let us now draw the image here as well. I'll be drawing the image as dotted line. Why? Because that's everything imaginary. Watch well. Right? Do you understand? Small object, big image, magnifying lens. That's the purpose of the magnifying lens. But if you see, the image is virtual. Image is virtual. 
it is upright. The object is above the principal axis. The image is also above the principal axis. They are on the same side of the principal axis. The image is upright and as well as the image is magnified. That's the whole purpose of the magnifying lens to magnify the image of the small objects and this is what you see happening here. Please do pay attention that all the imaginary work has to be done in dotted lines. The real lines, the real ray of lights are never going to intersect anywhere. So you are extending them behind the lens where they appear if, uh, if a person who is looking at the object is looking from somewhere here. That's the eye. That's how you draw the eye in physics. If the person is looking from here to this person, the light, these two ray of light that you see here, they seem to be coming from this point, like this, like this. That's why he perceives the image to be created at this point, which is a virtual image because this image is a perceived image. The eyes do really see it, but it's a virtual image. It is upright and a magnified image. So here we'll be talking about the key point summary on the applications of converging lens. We have learned about the camera, we have learned about the projector and the magnifying lens. So let us understand how are the converging lenses used as a camera. The object has to be beyond 2f and the image is between f and 2f. The image is real, inverted and diminished. All right. And when the object is at 2f, the image is at 2f. This is a special case scenario where we have done a video on special case ray diagrams, right? Here also the image is real, inverted and same size. For projectors, the object has to be between focus and 2f and the image is beyond 2f. The image here is also real, inverted, but it is magnified. In the camera, it is diminished. All right. Now a special case scenario again, which we have done in the special case ray diagrams. When the object is at f, the image is at infinity. Talking about the magnifying class, which is a supplementary section of your syllabus, the object has to be between f and the lens. The image is at the same side of the lens as the object. The image is virtual, upright, and magnified. This is the summary and with this we finish our applications of converging lens.